Maybe they're just figuring we'll, we'll, um, we'll figure it out. And then <laughs> we'll just tell them. That doesn't matter. Whatever we figure it out. So they don't need to actually be here to help figure it out. Well, I think the idea is to just get it, wait for it to get to know them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the guy that opened it was over there. Right. Don't they have any power strips? Yeah, they're in this. Um, there's some about the power strips. Yeah, more left. Yep. I guess I should go closer so I'm on the video. I think we're live now, by the way. No, it's going to be with the whiteboard. Oh, yeah. Cool. Well, there's the ones in front of me. <laughs> I forget the rest of them got dealt with by whoever. Goes and retrieves that, parses it from microformats, goes, okay, looks cool, uh, returns a result saying, okay, I got it. Um, like 200 or 202 okay, or you have synchronous, asynchronous stuff figured out. So that's the basic thing I mentioned. And one of the reasons I like this is like, this is basically like a W turned outside. <laughs> Look at the protocol. <laughs> Plain web 
dimensions are getting spanned, just like ping backs eventually get spanned. And because of that, if you do operate a blog that receives web mentions, like Ben does, uh, you have at least and done some degree of, say, uh, whitelist filtering or maybe blacklist blocking or some heuristic. Let's just say that <clears throat> Ben starts getting spammed by a random non spam registration. Screw it. I don't want to get like web mentions from everybody. However, I'm going to apply my own secret sauce algorithm. Say, I've got a whitelist of people that I trust or people that I uh, uh, like getting comments from. Or, the really easy one is, um, I've got this cache of everyone I've ever linked to in my blog. And the assumption is if I've linked to you, it's totally cool if you want to send a comment my way. But you don't need to tell anyone that that's your, that's your trick. Whatever it is, Ben has a black box that he's created that is like the, um, uh, like, like, like the, let's just call it, that's your approval box or whatever. So. Approval algorithm. I'll get my little diamond inside to make it look cool. And so you Ben is still getting web mentions. Some of them are getting through, others are not. No one knows why except that. And that's fine. But that's a very coarse solution, right? Because only people that he thinks of that would match that, you know, are able to get through. He also wants to receive comments from people he doesn't know but that are reasonable people that will leave comments, like everyone they wrote today. So that's where web mention plus vouch comes in. So the assumption is you've already tried to build some sort of simple box, whether it's like, here are my top 10 friends, or here's everyone linked to, or whatever heuristic. That's up to you. Um, that's important, because web mention plus vouch actually uses the existence of that as a building block. The way web mention plus vouch works is, um, at the end of this process, you send a, this is where I can look at my notes. So I basically dump this into IRC. And then Recreate it if I can't find it. Was it HTTP? Yeah, it is an HTTP character. Which one's precondition? Uh, 412. Okay, <laughs> sorry. That's the one. Ah, okay. So, uh, the way it works is when you, when Ben gets the web mention, the plain web mention, the source target, checks it with his approval algorithm, rejects it, if he supports web mention, Instead of returning, what's the normal error for rejecting a web mention? 400. 400. He returns at 412. Okay, we got that? That's where we start. So then, if A supports sending a web mention plus vouch with vouch, then A starts this process. A goes, okay, that's cool. You don't know me. I still have something cool to say to your site, say to your, say to your blog post. I'm going to send you. A, this time, a web mention not just with the source, uh, but also um, plus a vouch to you, target. Okay, 
So now Ben's endpoint goes, oh, I've got a web mention plus vouch. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go check this vouch. Checking a vouch from the receiver consists of two steps. So the first step, uh, a vouch is it? well, let me just say what a vouch is. Yeah, a vouch is a URL. So a vouch is a URL, let's call it from C, okay? Such that C has a link to A's site, the source. Okay? The source is site. Correct. Like directly. If you load C, you find a link to A's site. The same way that when you receive a web mention, matching. when you load the source, you find a link to the target. But matching just the domain, not, Correct. not a full URL. Correct. Okay? The other thing. The other thing, uh, so that's the trivial check. That's the first thing you check. Does this vouch actually link to the source that's claiming to vouch for? The second piece is does B approve C? So this is not deliberately unspecified. And this is where I'm saying you use this box, this black box you came up with first in your first level attempt to like filter off or fight off spam. It can be super simple. And the reason is that by leaving this undefined, it actually makes it harder to forge these vouchers. But the simplest thing that someone sending a vouch could do is basically say, hey, I know Ben has linked to, uh, what's a good uh, word, Charlie. I know Ben has linked to Charlie uh, in the past. And Charlie has linked to me. Or Charlie has linked to Aaron in the past, right? Charlie has linked to Aaron. So Aaron goes and finds a URL, a blog post on Charlie's site, C, that links directly to Aaron. Like, oh yeah, here's the blog post where Charlie linked to, to Aaron. Okay, great. I'm going to, and then sends that as the vouch. The assumption is that because uh, Ben has, say, linked to C, or mentioned C, or somehow they're friends, like, you just know that through whatever side channel, that A thinks, okay, if this comment were coming from C, Ben would probably approve it, or he has approved the comments from him in the past, and then sends that as the vouch. Now, Ben tests the, both these conditions. Again, this isn't public, so he just applies whatever algorithm he's got. If that, it's accepted, then it's accepted, and then what I mentioned is accepted. So, one test C links to A's site <coughs> domain. And then two approve C. Now you can do these in either order, it doesn't matter. So if you've got like a really simple approval algorithm, maybe you do this first. Maybe you go, oh, you know what, I don't trust that vouch. So, whatever, I don't like that vouch. You know, trust doesn't even have to come into it. Um, but both those need to pass. And then the flow continues. Um, if you know you've already received a uh, web mention from that source, that target, you don't need to do this stuff again. Right? So you can sort of cache web mention attempts. There's some assumption that you would do that because it's efficient. Uh, and then you just send the response. Back to A, whether you approved it or not. And that uses the same result code as, as what I mentioned. And that's it. Now, the point of this is this is, should be super easy for the receiver to test. So, this is designed for easy implementation for the receiver of a vouch, and that's very deliberate. It puts the cost of finding a vouch and sending a vouch on the sender, and that's also deliberate, and it also makes it ambiguous. Which does two things. It makes it really hard to automate. <coughs> it makes it really hard to automate, and that, that's that's a design feature that like SMTP failed at, and Pingback failed at, and Trackback failed at, and all of those failed at. Is that they made it far too easy for senders and not for the receivers. 
and Valve does the opposite. We say we're going to make it easier for the receivers to check something, harder for the senders. <coughs> How do I find a vouch? If I'm someone sending a web mention, uh, that's a great opportunity for any reader UI or a <coughs> indie web like search engine to say, hey, I want to send, Aaron wants to send a comment. As Aaron wants to comment to Ben's blog. What are links that I've linked to? What are friends that we have in common? Right? That kind of social search kind of thing that's almost taken for granted in places like Facebook. So there's a lot of opportunity for that. <coughs> I think, is it um, Dan Like? It's like crawling and indexing links from blogs he's reading? Oh, is he? <coughs> I think so. So he can, he, like, he can, in his reader, say, hey, show me all the domains that, um, that Ben has linked to. He's built software, he can do that. And in that list, you would be like, oh, I know that guy. That guy has linked to me. OK, great. I'll use that as my vouch URL. So there's some UI challenges, for sure, to be, uh, to be addressed here. But I do think that's, that's an area that we can work on, and based on those kind of social-like features actually use. Plus, once you accept a comment from someone the very first time, now you're directly linking to them. So once Ben accepts a comment from Aaron, uh, the theory is he's now gone into Ben's approval algorithm and no longer needs to send a match. So it's a one-time challenge to establish a relationship like that. And after that, it should just work. And like I said, from the receiver end, that, that should be something you can automate if you, say, keep a cache of every outgoing link from your site, including links in your comments. So links to comments on your posts, those permalinks. One more test when I said, when I said there's only two tests. When you check this link, and in fact, you should check this link, you might want to consider checking this on web mention in general, that this link itself, uh, it must not have a rel of no follow. <laughs> and there's a very good reason for this. Let's say Ben writes a blog post and it's like, you got to look out for this. Uh, it's a good. Uh, Like negative name. Spam. Sam. <laughs> the, the you gotta look out for spam. Sam Spammer. <laughs> Sam Spammer. There's one. What's one of the cryptography? Well, actually, I, actually, That's I don't want to use for spam. spam. Let's say you, you say. Sam um, Spammer. You gotta look out for. It's. Um, it's Eve. Eve. Mm -hmm. The Eve's not really yeah. the No, but that's not what we're dealing with here. Mm -hmm. And it's not Eve is usually the, the villain, but this is this is uh, different. So it is not Eve. This is not man in the middle. Not is not mm -hmm. Eve dropping. This yeah, is spam. Not, so. All right, I'm going to say spam, spam. Spam. So either I'm writing a blog post that's like, hey, look out for this spammer, Sam spammer, or you know, Ben's writing a blog post. Look out for Sam spammer. Oh, by the way, also look out for um, Tommy Troll. Uh, but now the problem is, if you've done that, let's say your automatic approval algorithm caches all your outbound links then you would be caching these links to all these people and you would approve them as vouchers, potentially. So someone else is like, oh yeah, Tom Troll is linked to me, I'm a total like awesome, critical, you know, kind of poster, I'm a comment, I can just use that vouch. Right? It's, it, it then forces Ben, when he's doing those links, to actually add realm of follow to those links in his posts so that they cannot act as vouchers. Someone can use potentially any domain as a vouch, right? Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. So the reason that works, or that doesn't work, is that Twitter puts real follow on all their outbound links. So you will not find any Twitter links C that can vouch for a site. Are there times that don't put real follow? What's that? Like GitHub, for example. Hello, I believe. 
link does not. And the GitHub is very common. You can have links and comments by anybody on your repos. Yeah. Is that a problem? Potentially, you can block them, right? I don't think so. Well, no, no, you, you, you modify your you account as well, or to say anything on GitHub. <coughs> no, I mean, on GitHub, on your GitHub account, I'm sure you can block other... But you may not want to. You may still want to have the, you know, th the thread in your repo or something. Is it a problem that... Right. So, you are, I guess you're a and you just wouldn't have to blacklist GitHub, basically? Or, when you link to GitHub, you link to GitHub with a wrong follow. Yeah. Thus indicating you're not actually affording any trust to them in any fashion. Google. Well, I may not want to link to GitHub with Morel because I may want the fact that I link to GitHub, my GitHub repo, to be followed. Right? Yeah, so I think you turn it around on the algorithm mm -hmm. side, right? And say, you know, since that's a public facing repo and I want the comments from end users, but I don't necessarily trust that all those folks aren't necessarily yeah. spammers, then GitHub. It's not going to be a domain that I trust. Period. It's not an adoption domain. It's not an adoption domain. Yeah. yeah. Is that all? Go ahead. I mean, so then, what you would do is you would put GitHub as a blacklist here. But there's you know n of those, and you may not know them all. Correct. So how do you maintain those? Cool. So there's there's two pieces of that. There may be n of those, but when you take of those, you're talking about silos. Mm -hmm. Silos all have their own blocking UIs. The assumption is a good silo, a decent silo, will have a way to block people. It's not about blocking because I, I do actually want comments on my repos from literally yeah, anybody. It, it actually has nothing to do with blocking because as long as they have any URL anywhere in my domain, because you put it to domain, they could not be in my GitHub repo. Right, that's true. Right. So it's more of when you link to places that you know to be silos. You have to be careful to know what you're, exactly what you're linking to. Yeah, so it's not end of, it's only the places you've linked to. Right? If you, assuming your approval algorithm does some. <coughs> so, that, but that's a little scary because I've linked to a lot of things um, with you know, relatively little thought to it because I'm sharing, I'm just posting it all the time. Right? And most of those places are, are not going to link to spammers. That's why this works. Most of those places kick off spammers very quickly. So the spammers yeah. are never able to actually use those places as a vouch. So that's a good point. Like Wikipedia, let's use that as an example. I, like, good luck as a spammer getting Wikipedia to vouch for you. You put a spam link up there, it's going to be deleted like that. <coughs> right? Even though it's a totally open thing, if someone used the Wikipedia as a vouch, it seems kind of like, oh, anyone could be anyone. But in reality, um, since the goal here is to stop these like automated spam attacks, those the automated spammers have no chance against communities like Wikipedia. They just get cleaned up like that. And I would argue that the same is true for GitHub, for Twitter, for anyone else, where someone can say, report abuse, this is a spam account, it usually gets deleted pretty quickly. So there's always like a time delay though between like with <laughs> Wikipedia it's relatively short. With something else maybe longer. <laughs> like Instagram, for example. It's a concern I think most when you if they get into that one, you know, short period of time and actually get a comment on your site, if you are automatically saying, oh, well, somebody got an approved comment, now they go into my approval algorithm, yeah. then you're just open to... Yeah, so yeah. you... I would, yeah, I'd say you, instead of just or... storing that, oh, I've approved this person, you store what you approved and actually check that the link is still there. Right. Um, you, you periodically or what? Yeah, probably. <clears throat> You could. Um, That's a lot of maintenance work on this. Or, or, or you could say it's a permission period, and like if someone installed that like the next day. So the other assumption is you are like the comments that get through. I know you have this, Aaron. You have a mention speed of all your comments that anyone's comments on anything. Mm -hmm. As soon as you see like a sketchy comment, yeah. I mean I do this heck on my Instagram. As soon as I see a bad comment, I just gonna delete it. If I deleted it, that thing is not only like not in my approval algorithm. I'm probably adding it to my block list, my personal block list. If it's there, it doesn't matter, vouch or no vouch, nothing's getting through. Hmm. So that's, that's oh, the other simple solution. The other, the other thing When is you delete a comment, <coughs> um, like the UI on Instagram is a perfect example. It says delete or delete and block. Hmm. And if you hit delete and block, that mm -hmm. user is never going to be comment for the first The other part of that is you don't have to, like once you add somebody to your, your uh, approval list, you don't have to add them forever. 
because you could very easily add them for a week, and then after a week make them go and batch again. You could. Sure. And that way, that way you don't have to like periodically just go refresh through all of your old posts to check things. You can just like force people to rebatch. Your approval algorithm <coughs> could say, "Have I linked to this person in the last week?" Yeah. For example. Yeah. Um, and that way you just do that query. You don't need to remove them from the data. Mm -hmm. That's just your query. Have I linked to this person last week or last month or? Um, Brett in the chat just said, uh, with, as far as Wikipedia, you can always spam user pages. And those aren't edited by the Those aren't as, uh, mm -hmm. as monitored. As monitored. <coughs> do those get relevant follow-up from them? I'm pretty sure. I do not know. Uh, it's a trivial check, right? Yeah. I wonder, like, without, without it complicating things, because I guess this could probably be part of the approval algorithm, but, and at the risk of, centralizing something, I could see an opportunity for some area for, for so I get C back, uh, <coughs> saying that, you know, C link to it, and maybe then I do a check to see, like, what the uh, reputation of C is against, like, a crowdsourced list of, mm -hmm. you know, That's so that, like, I, as people start reporting things up or down, you know, and, and I can set in my system, you know, I, you know, I'll trust anybody. Like, if, if I get a comment back <coughs> from C, yeah, or I get a, you know, a vouch back that says C did it, I'll do it. But maybe I say uh, N equals five. Like, I need that person to at least have, uh, you know, been verified by five other people as, yeah, no, no problem with that. Um, Now, obviously, that, that starts to talk about some sort of centralized blacklist, but yeah. a, which is what it gives a way to centralize that. But so yeah. Gizma tried that, it's, yeah, and it didn't. It hasn't worked. Like WordPress is still talking about turning off pingbacks. I despite like, that, I like the idea of just like having I I'd probably post my own blacklist and have it only friends can view. Yeah, and you can share your blacklist. Yeah, share your blacklist. You can do that too. Right. But you can just have a private blacklist. Yeah. Be like, this person is just being abusive. I don't want to ever see comments from them. Mm -hmm. Then they don't even they don't pass any of this, right? Uh, or you can add things there which are like vouch holes, where it turns out someone opens up a domain where someone's able to like comment anything on GitHub or something, and you say, you know what, GitHub's a vouch hole. I'm just not gonna like I'm gonna put that in, the, in my in my block list. And keep in mind, I'm talking about like the blacklist idea as after the vouch has happened. That's right. Yeah. So the, this is an in replacement of the vouch <coughs> method. It's after the vouch has happened, what's the reputation of the person that's vouching for the commenter? Well, so the, the goal here is that people will likely use indie web domains because they're posting to like indie to indie, and there's this almost social aspect of like uh, a, a base vouch on the social <laughs> construct of someone throwing a house party and, and just telling their friends that they invite, like, you just send out one message to your friends, like a dozen friends or so, you're like, all right, you guys are all invited, and you can also um, invite your friends. You don't ask to see who, to know who they are, you just let them know they can invite their friends. Then the party comes along, um, you know, some of your friends show up, and then, like, a random person shows up, and you're like, who are you? So that's, that's basically the 412 here. Precondition required. Who are you? How do I know you? And they're like, oh, I'm friends of so-and-so that you invited. That's a vouch. And then you're like, oh, I know so-and-so. Pass this test. Hey, so-and-so, your friend A is here. Oh, yeah, that's my friend A from whatever, whatever, whatever. This test passed. So based on that, but, you know, if you're like, if you tell them that and they don't, they don't tell you how, the, how you know them or they're like, I'm friends with so-and-so, and the person's like, I have no idea who that is. You're like, I'm sorry, I don't know you, they don't know you, goodbye. Or if they say, I'm, I know you from uh, Wikipedia, or I know you from the JavaScript meetup. And you're like, I don't really remember you from the JavaScript meetup. That's kind of like the vouch holes, the GitHub kind of scenario. Where you're like, ah, that's not a person. That's a, you know, it's a community kind of thing. But I think, like, you know, part of the point that I think Aaron was getting at is um, 
sometimes it's not enough to just know another world. Like, oh, I know Tantic. Like, that's great. How do you know him? And you say, oh, God, we got this huge argument. Like, we were going back and forth on a post. And total jackass. <laughs> In this system, they're approved because C knew. Like, there was a, a relationship there. But it may not necessarily, just by virtue of the fact of, of knowing someone, do, doesn't necessarily mean like that person would vouch for well, linking to them. Cool. Right. right. So that, that was a point where if you're linking to someone particularly disagreeable, you probably should be linking to them. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. General practice. <laughs> general practice. And this is how you basically, yeah, this essentially opens the floodgates for like, yeah, if you're linking to someone, you're kind of saying it's okay for them to comment. That's the basic assertion that I'm placing. And not only that, you're just saying it's okay for them to comment on the people that trust you. I kind of like the idea of, I might actually do that as, um, like, keep a record of how many hops away they start fast. Like, okay, I'm friends with Aaron, and, you know, Brett posts to Aaron's, now he's two hops away. And I'll record him in my list, but say, yeah, I know him only through other people. Sure. You know, and, you know, maybe at five hops away, no, no more, you know? So you can kind of keep it to a close. My guess is most people you know, or even would comment on your blog post, are only at most three hops away. That's, I think that's partially what's going to happen here, yeah. what's going on. So and the spammers are going to be like n hops away. Yeah. So, um, this is, so this is a lot of discussion about the, like, the verification, or the, the, the creating or finding the batch URL, or like, the approval method that you use. What is the simplest thing that I can do to verify batches right now. This box. So, like, okay. what do I need to do to do that before? The simplest? Besides the fact that, like, it requires somebody else to go create a batch. Like, I just want to do something quick. To, to, to verify. To, to verify. verify right? That's what I can do quickly without this, requiring anybody else to do anything. So, the simplest implementation of this box is if you have a way in your CMS to say, have I ever linked to this person? You query that. Full stop. Okay, so, so I can make a I can I can go index on my posts, find all the outbound links. Right. If you have that already, right. well, like if you don't have that already, then another most simple way. Most people don't. Most people have a storage, you know, storage of their posts with the links in it, in some form. But, but then, it's but usually not just one query. database query. It's like one database query, right? Uh, it's not going to be a capacity database query. It's in a database, and I don't have a database of my content. I have files. Okay. So, right. so let me ask that. I can actually grab my files array. <laughs> <laughs> Um, actually, I totally can do that. That would totally work. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not going to be fast. Uh, I think brainstorming for right. you know, different ways of, of, of quickly having approval algorithm is, is good. Or you could even do something really simple like check your homepage. And I know that's kind of minimal, but you link to a lot of people on your homepage. If you have a lot of blog posts, your recent posts, your recent notes. Um, and I'll show my blog posts on my homepage. Well, whatever you have on the stream. Um, okay, so yeah. I think that's where the caching comes in, right? Like, the first time that web mention may not be immediate, and that's okay for it to be queued up until that query has completed. Uh, but then once that query is completed and they're good to go, it's in its own tail. And, you know, it's, you're not having to route through your entire site to find links. You have a whitelist of people that you're like, well, that person was approved. And if you need to ever go back in for some reason, something got in that you didn't mean to, you know, in your CMS, you would take that that link out of it. Um, and resolve the issue. But okay, so so let's say let's say I do some really simple approval algorithm, probably using Grub since I can actually do that today without writing any code. Okay, yeah, that's the idea. What well, can you do today without writing any code? And then write that framing down. That's a good <laughs> plan. <laughs> approval algorithm. What can you do today without writing any more code? Um, yeah, that's that's a good first step. <clears throat> so yeah, I can I can write a grep command that will find the main and all my posts. Uh, then what do I have to do? So then that then so you should immediately start applying that here. So the idea is then you apply that to every web mention that comes in. Every web mention that comes in checks have I linked there before? If so, approve. If not, reject with 412. Sorry, I came late, but is the precondition for this the same sort of approve, you know, proving that you were connected to yourself that one had to do to register for this conference? Because obviously, I could just, you know, 
it, when I'm spamming, I can list my domain as anything. Um, and, and, some, and some spammers do do that. Like this, but somebody like, has to link to it. That's the harder thing already. No, but I mean, I, I could claim that I'm I'm coming from you know Microsoft.com, or I can claim I'm coming from you know IndieWeb. Dot. Then that the source code. Okay. You so don't even get there because that post doesn't even link to the target. Doesn't even get past the first web mention test. Plain web mentions today. No, but do I have to prove I have any kind of control over the thing I'm claiming to be linking from? No, That's what sense. You actually okay. don't have Sorry, control over the yeah over the gosh. No. So we've done a web mention first. Do you know how that works? Um. Yeah, I think. So I mean, um, all right. So this okay. So this is preventing spams in the web mentions as well as for for comments. Okay. Well, right. web mentions do comments already. Right. Yeah. That works today. The idea here is that that's going to get spammed. We know that. Yeah. That's coming. And so inevitably, everyone's going to end up building a really simple, quick and dirty approval <laughs> algorithm to at least get let some links yeah. through. Right. It's not perfect. Um, the, Vouch is a protocol that builds on that that lets you use sort of the, the social aspect of the web and people linking to each other as a distributed filter, as it were, or distributed yeah. sort of approval mechanism. OK, so, okay. so step one is sending an HTTP port or not. Well, yeah, step one is you make an approval algorithm. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just like, is your URL one of these 10? <laughs> sure, yeah, so we can just whitelist everybody in this room right now. That, that's a, that's right. Whatever that is, that's exactly what goes in that box. Um, Step two is add that to your web mention code <laughs> as one of the tests. Not just the source links to target, but source <laughs> passes your approval algorithm. And if it doesn't pass the approval algorithm, you return 412. That 412. How much you, you guys like familiar with HTTP like details? Yeah. So it, for, so I, I picked that because. That the error condition is uh, precondition required, or precondition missing. And the precondition that's missing is the vouch parameter. You're basically saying, hey, from you, I will not accept a web mention that wants a source and target. I will accept a web mention that has a source plus and vouch. Does there mean anything in the, in the body that's, that indicates this is a vouch that's required? That seems good. Or seems good. is just 412 when sending a web mention enough to indicate that? I think that's enough. I'm going to say that, yeah. And if okay. something else comes along, we can add something to the body or whatever. Okay, so we have step one, step two. So step three is then when a web entry comes in with a vouch, then Then you do two checks. But the assumption is either you have this check already cached, so you've already done the source target check. Like if you've done the source target check, you don't need to do it again. Let's assume you haven't because adding caching is extra. Okay, so then you check it again. Um, or you do these checks first. So it's also possible to do the source target check last, always. Yeah. Right? That's the other way of doing it. It doesn't so, matter what order so, you do it, because that's the same effect. So basically, so check web engine like normal, then verify the batch. So what is verify the batch? Okay. Two steps. This one looks like a HTTP nitpicking kind of view. I think what 412 means is what one of the preconditions of the client specified for the server to respond this way. Or a precondition is missing. Uh, it's any precondition posed by the client. Or, uh, the precondition given one more of the request header fields evaluate false when discussed on the server. The yeah. response allows the client to place preconditions on the current request. So it's meant for the client to so it's it's saying the, the accept header. It's the if match. Any of the process headers, but yeah. Except for, yeah, uh, if match caching things. Right. So what would be the... Oh, yeah. Probably she has a crappy bunch of references. Yes. <laughs> um, there might be a better one. I don't know. Of course, if you didn't expect fail. Um, that would actually be good, though, because then the sender of the web mention can say, hey, I can send a vouch, too. And then the, the receiver says, OK, now send me a vouch, <laughs> basically. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's your problem. There, there isn't 
one that the server can use to have the client retry with it. Well, precondition fail is that, but it requires the, the precondition to have been imposed by the client. So the client says, sorry client, you asked for this, accept header, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Client can try again without that. Mm -hmm. That's the closest one. Yeah, yeah that's the closest one. It's, for, well, it's not quite a transportation. Yeah, it's not quite 401, which is not. Cause that's the closest system. I got. So, 412 is the closest. Is this 428 a precondition client? I'm just on Wikipedia and most of them. Oh, I should probably do that. The origin server requires the request to be conditional, intended to prevent loss of value. Should be retried after performing action for form nine. You try with it. Retry with it. That's actually that's Microsoft kind of it. No, that's, that's actually exactly it. it I yeah. think it's I think Where's it's wrong. It's it's a, it's a Microsoft extension. <laughs> 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 that's hilarious. Okay. It's in the spec. <laughs> it's in the SDN. Yeah. Seems legit. That does seem legit. That does sound, that does sound better. Let's put it that way. It's I mean, <laughs> it is exactly what it's for. And it even says retry with valid parameters. Right. Yeah. So we could say retry with valid parameter vouch in the response. I think 401 would be it's like not too obvious. Yeah. But I guess it. Is it basic, it? Yeah, the, the problem is, yeah, that's why we, it's not even good to really launch the stuff, it's off, because right? it requires Yeah, and also, also the HTTP says you must reply with the request. That's a good question. Yeah. That's what we don't. Hey, I like 449. That's, okay. a, good, that's a good find. Where I start, <laughs> you say how vouch is sent along with web engine as a header or a new param to the get? Yes. Another, another query parameter. I, th I think it might be good to have something in the response that says explicitly, I want a badge. Well, this, so this sends the... Other ways to use a I mean, this H449 actually has like <laughs> sample text. Yeah, and uh, yeah, where are you finding the sample text? That, I in, in the Wikipedia, 449. Yeah. I mean, list of HTTP status codes. Oh, yeah, retry with. So where's the, where's the example response? That's it. In quotes, no. The Avian Go website Wait, says, hey, no, well, it's not. We'll try with valid parameters, param one, param two. That's all part of the header? Yeah, it's retry with dot dot dot, not just retry with. <laughs> like, which seems kind of silly. That seems weird. Um, That's, that seems fine to me. <laughs> retry with vouch. Great. It's really all I check ever is the code. Then. All the mistakes I do with the text. Yeah, most things don't parse up the text of HTTP code responses. I think people have a hard time. Yeah, yeah, for occasions may choose to learn or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's uh, let's uh, embrace and extend Microsoft's uh, extension. It's a good extension. I think that should be there. First time it's ever been other than the U.S. <laughs> embrace Microsoft. Anything? Let's embrace Microsoft. Call me 499 is on Wikipedia from Azure. Which one? 499, token required, and 498, token expired. Um, well, there's two 499, there's two 499s. Oh yeah, Nginx does that one too. Yeah. Exciting. Alright, so getting back to... Yeah. So four four nine. So the response. What does the response actually look like? HTTP slash one point one four nine nine retry four four nine four four nine retry space with space. But we can't put any data there because no libraries are going to let us parse that out. 
So where's the... Um, <laughs> I don't know, it goes through PHP, so I'm not talking about it. Yeah. In the curl client? Yeah. You can get the raw text on it. Yeah. I mean, it's in, like, I actually have to parse that for... There's HTTP code, last receipt HTTP code. Yeah. Does that include the full string? 200 OK. Or, you know, whatever. Not just the number? That's my understanding. Yeah, there's a... Uh, oh, well. I do it somewhere in there. I think I return that string whenever it returns to something I mentioned. No, the examples in here are that it's returning an integer. Yeah, you can get the integer, but I thought you could get the string too. Yeah, If not in the header, like the HTTP yeah. header, which makes me nervous because I don't think anything's going to parse that out. Um, There's no problem putting it in both anyway. Yeah, it's no problem putting it in both. Yeah. Um, would it be a. I honestly don't think we need to add anything more to that. Probably. The simplest answer is to just say if you send a web edition and someone returns a 449, yeah. you, you need to send a vouch. <laughs> Like, I hope we don't have to test this protocol like, anymore at all, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's... By the way, you may never even get this first one. They may just send you a, a, a source list vouch yeah. in the first place. Because right. they may be like, well, Aaron doesn't really know me. Yeah, like if you're sending a web message to somebody you know that we've never linked to. Or they've never, or linked, they've to never linked to you. Like they have no idea. You're actually better off sending a vouch. Right yeah. off the bat. Yep. And your client could suggest that. Right. Your, your, your client, yes. where your UI, where you're posting your comment in your, you know, <coughs> in your CMS yeah. on your site, could be like, um, you know, this guy's never linked to you. Because let's say your client is smart and has been keeping track of everyone who's linked to you. Um, That's fine. Watching your CP refers, whatever. Uh, so you may want to just send a vouch. No, by the way, uh, here's a good one to use. Yeah, here are the sites that, that have linked to you that he does link to. So you know, if you have the CMS that's been caching all that information. Um, yeah, because your CMS could literally, while you're while you're typing up your reply or comment, there is that <coughs> field where it's like in reply to this URL. Is it ever linked to you? No. Okay. It can go answer that like in the background. And then it can also figure out like, okay, let's go, it could be like, let's go check that guy's recent feed, see who was linked to in the past like couple of days or a couple of months, check his archives. Okay, index those links. Do any of those links match any of the sites that have already linked to you? Oh they have, here we go. I'll autofill those vouch for you. So it's it's possible to potentially put completely automate that piece of the process um, as like an Anita Indie type connection in a way that's not feasible for like random site to random site, so, which is okay. And this is actually something that I would love to see set up as a service because I don't want to write that much crawling code. Sure. For suggesting that. But like you could ask, you could ask shrewdness. Yeah, exactly. So hey, shrewdness, you've seen a ton of posts. <laughs> yeah, that's a great thing to have a shrewdness where, um, yeah, it's just crawling away. And if I trust shrewdness, then I can just be like, oh, hey, give me some suggestions for the URLs to use or the vouch to this site. Yeah. So then did you get these two tests? Probably not. So you've been sent the web mention with vouch. You've got the vouch parameter. That leads you down a different verification path. <coughs> okay, so, so I'm accepting a, a web mention with the vouch. Okay. It may be cold. I mean, I have had them cold. So I'm going to verify the image and I'm going to verify the dash. How do I verify the vouch? So you can decide what's easier for you. Do you want to verify that you like the vouch? Or do you want to verify that the vouch actually links to the source? Your choice. What's the advantage of each? Well, you're going to do both. It's just whichever order. 
You, you, yeah, you do, you're going to do both against people. Right, so, but you can reject after either one fails. That's the point. One, does, one requires network traffic, one does not. So. Potentially, yeah. Okay. So the okay, idea so. is, if your little approval algorithm box is like short and fast, maybe check this first. Do you approve the vouch at all? <laughs> the the vouch, um, if I approve the vouching domain. Yeah. It does it have to pass my proof water than the store? Yes. Because you have to somehow trust, trust, trust yeah. Part. That's why it's a voucher, right? Oh yeah, I trust that guy to vouch for this guy. I keep using the word trust when I should not mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm okay with it. <laughs> okay, so I have to check if I trust the vouching domain. If you're okay with it. If you approve. Let's call it a approve. Approve the voucher. Yeah, approve is good. Yeah, okay. approve is good. Okay. Right. It's approve logs. Trust check if I approve it. Um, because I'm assuming that the sender picked something that I already approved. Or they think or they you would approve. I, like maybe they know socially. Yeah. Oh yeah, you, you've never looked at this guy, but you know this guy. Okay. So that's just running it through the approval algorithm again. Correct. Okay. So that's a black box. Second one is I have to Then you go retrieve the vouch. Vouch the vouch URL. Yeah. Verify that it actually does link to the sources domain, sources domain. With not without realm no fault. So you need to find. So if you want me to like, in a programmatic sense, you retrieve C, you grep it or filter it or parse it or whatever for all links to A's site. One of those links must have <coughs> no realm no fault. So you then go through that list if that list is non empty. And you check, does this is this link without well no follow? Yes? Okay. Test passed. I'm done. If you reach the end of the list of those such links, then they all are well no follow, the test fails. Is anyone typing this into IRC or the interpath? Yeah. This? Yeah. Okay, thank you. It's in a section called How to Do This Today. Not just any webcam dash about dash vouch. No, I mean like that's the, the subject for this. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> the section. Okay. Yes, I've been trying to keep the chat for more. What's a grapple chart? What's that? Grapple is the app that makes these nice charts. We fixed spam. So, implemented one, yes or no? Um, verification, yes. I can, I can do it. Do you get approval? Yeah. Do the, the, whole, the whole verification of, of and this stuff. Yeah. Okay, so the protocol is implemented. Yeah. I have no idea how I'm going to find the main vouch URL, for example. That one is not something I feel like I can do. Percent. Yeah? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't think about that. Pick someone here that's, that's never linked to you. Um, you probably have not. What's your website? Let's see, I have mlncn.com that nothing has gone up to in like four years because I've been broken. And then I have agaric.com which is posted to rarely. Um, which one did you sign up with? And I, I, to sign up? You signed up for the I, Yeah, I had to fight my way in by getting Twitter to talk to the new MLNC and dot with gnome.com, I think. Is how okay, so you use your gnome. Yeah, I use okay. it with gnome. So that's probably a good, because that one that links to everything else. I so have. if I wanted to send you a comment, yeah. I need to find something that we have in common. Now remember that you already know what post you're replying to. So there's a specific post yeah. that he's written that you're commenting on. So I'll check out the Firefox thing right now and blog time with no. Okay, so uh, I, need, I guess I should I need to pick a post that I reply to. So uh, here's here's one that says you're coming to here. That's relevant. 
to be like, hey, uh, see you there. So I'm looking at this post. So you might maybe look at his homepage. So, well, I, I'm, I'm looking at this post. First thing I see is link to the wiki. Okay. So you could potentially use any webcam. So Try I using webcam.com as a vouch. Because that, that definitely links to you. So you could be like, oh, by the way, I'm, you know, here's my indie webcam.com slash Aaron Brecky, Aaron PK. This links to my site. Right? Is the, is the indie webcam wiki a reasonable thing to use? Why not? For them to have added a link um, <coughs> to their site, they would have to have signed it to the wiki with yeah. indie auth. And does the yeah. actually, that's true. <laughs> We're just definitely going to stop any spam, right? I can tell you right now. I was like... Um, yeah. So therefore, it becomes this really good uh, vouch, source of voucher URLs. Actually, the, the other question was, if the, well, it's Wikimedia, but um, I know they... And the nice thing is we get this whole community of people who are going to be like, if we see any spammer could do anything on, on the new Wikimedia Wiki, we're deleting them, like that. Like, they're gone, they're history. User page or not, no matter what they, what they do. As soon as they try to create an account, not there. So, okay, that's good. Well, so I, I don't know how I would. So right there. Okay, so you just solved the problem. How do I find right, the I've got like something. I click my reply button in my browser because I've got a browser <coughs> reply button. I'm looking at my posting UI that has the reply to URL. <coughs> so what I need now then to be able to add a parameter in my posting UI. So you, you say, clearly need a vouch uh, field. I need a vouch field in my posting UI for the store. At the minimum. Assuming that I don't make my software do it automatically. That's right. Well, you can start manual. manual which I don't want to automate it because I don't even know how I would automate it. Or maybe your software finds a weak vouch. And you're like, ah, I know that this guy is a stronger vouch. It's more personal. Well, <laughs> the vouch is... is uh, is a whole, it's not a whole domain, it's going to be sp this specific mention, because otherwise it's the responsibility Correct. of the sender just like spider a whole domain, so that's yeah. not cool. It's, that's the actual yeah. page. It's the actual See, is an actual page. Yeah. Links to a site. This link can be to the whole domain. But presumably so, your approval wait, algorithm... So I actually have to find, so I see that you link to the wiki, I actually find a page on the wiki that links back to you. For the no, to you. Oh, to me now. Because you're the one, yeah, you're trying to find <laughs> someone. You're trying to get the wiki to vouch for you. So I know the wiki links to me. Yes. Bingo. On my user page. So you just go there and use it. But you as a human know that. That's like much harder for a robot to do, to automate, right? You as a human can like like a huge percentage of our brains are like are like evolved to handle this kind of <coughs> second degree social logic. So if the same page doesn't link to both of us, do you need it to put like in link two to things? No, no, okay, no. So it's one directional. What's doing the work? You link to the wiki, yeah. the wiki links to him. So all he sends direction. you, you link to the wiki, the wiki links to him. He sends you a mention, but includes okay. that link on the wiki. Right. Saying, hey, you link to the wiki, it links to me. Your approval you might be that link. B to C, C to A. But I'm linking to the wiki page that he's mentioned on. So no. No. No, it's a domain level. It's approval. Domain level. Uh, okay. Full circle. Okay. That w of B. This is a B. <laughs> That's the point. Assuming you've already uh, done everything <laughs> here, this is one send and receive, so that turns into a B. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That also works. Yeah, I thought that's true. <laughs> when the vouch is denied, is there any reason? No. I mean, I think that that's up to. Well, like, there's nothing stopping you from retrying the vouch. That, that's, that's a good point. What is the response if you reject the vouch? For not, not for at all. We need another vouch. No, for four for me. So we try to take over just for the DOS. If if a vouch, if it fails, it fails. Like the failure mode is in both of those. Right. Right. We have to be like redefined. Yeah. Okay. So return failure if it. If the batch verification and the yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, but at that point, like that's almost like a UI thing. The the, the failure yeah. comes back. Your your reply UI should say, "Hey, your comment wasn't yeah. accepted," um, you know, for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And then you, as a human, can decide, "Oh, my comment was rejected. 
you know, what do I do? Well, maybe the vouch wasn't good enough. Maybe I used GitHub and I should use something else. All right, I'll try, I'll try again with a different URL. So then you as a user actually say, okay, pick, some, you know, pick a different URL, post, or update, because you've already posted it on your site, um, sends the web mention, maybe it works that time, maybe it doesn't. But the point is the retry is not automatic. The retry, there should be a human loop. And that's the intent here. And that way it should happen at human time, not like automated bot time. So yeah, if you're seeing retries on a vouch that like appear automated, then that's that's like a bad sign. That's true. Yeah. Cool. And ideally you'd want to see um, people accepting web mentions that included vouchers from the start. So that when you retried, when you came back and go, oh, I used GitHub, I should have used something else, and you can just go ahead and like it doesn't have to be the back and forth all over again. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Because I, I could very easily see, you know, somebody say, like, all right, most of my stuff happening right now is on Indie Web, so I'm going to add that to my, like, white list of, like, my vouchers that I want to be tried before you let me know, like, I need to do a little digging, um, you know, in terms of automating it for a regular user. Okay, I mean, this is cool. I want to go do this now. <laughs> I mean, you haven't coded already. That's just writing the algorithm. He, he swore he wasn't going to do it. Tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. Okay. I'll have it done by the next one. But that means if we all implement verifying, we're not going to demo it tomorrow. At least if one of us needs something to send it. <laughs> well, I'm going to be sending with a curl. I, I, I can, I can demonstrate sending because that's how I send my mentions now. <laughs> <laughs> I will ma yeah, I, that's the thing, like, I manually construct my web engine I'm like, one more parameter, no big. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> but um, since you guys are already linked to me, I mean, you'd have to, like... Cool. Oh, yeah, I'll have to build my list. Is it coming? And now we just start so seeing that it's not a surprise. Okay. Who's doing the reply discussion? Um, I think me. Awesome. Yes, you are. So then I will sit down. And you want this computer? And you want this computer? Okay. So wait, that's not your actual user that you use for typing. Is it? Correct. Sure, you're done. Okay. <coughs> Let me go restart the screen. I'm going to block your view of the screen. You good?